Welcome back to another Fender Deluxe Reverb troubleshooting event. Uh, this one is interesting. This is the uh, shop amp again, is back on the bench. Very interesting problem this time, and I could actually show this one. It is safe to turn on uh, to demonstrate. And it was shown to me uh, by the owner of the amp. I will uh, replicate this. It is perfectly fine in the normal position. So I will play a G to show. And, and we could hear that G play and everything sounds just fine. And just to just demonstrate, I'm gonna turn bass up to nine and play it again. And I'll drop it. Now, now I take the bass out. The bass is gone. Put it back in. Definite, definite response there. You can, you can hear that. The problem is on the second channel. So I'm gonna put it in the second channel. I'll just shut the first channel off, right? Turn the volume up to three. So now I'll play that G. There's no bass in there. I got the bass on one. I'll turn it to 10. There's, there's still no bass. There's no, there's no low end on this channel. But before I even get into the amp, I could just look at the schematic and tear down this circuit and basically isolate this to just a couple of small areas. And I'm gonna make an educated guess uh, by highlighting some sections and talking about them briefly. Let's do that now. So right off the bat, we can see this is channel one right here in green, the normal channel. And channel two are two separate signals, the, uh, the wet and the dry. And that is uh, uh, shown here in orange and uh, pink. And both of them come here to terminate right here at this point. This is the commonality that goes into the, the phase inverter before it makes its way to the finals, right? And because we have um, uh, low end is working just fine on, on this channel, I don't suspect that there's any problem here in the phase inverter and final stage. So it has to be back before this commonality. So I'm saying that everything right here is probably just fine. Looking at this and not even at this anymore, it limits my troubleshooting right here. Now, when I was testing and saw this problem, I had turned reverb all of the way down and or had the uh, switch in the closed position. Uh, the closed position in that regard uh, takes this signal right here to this uh, grid and pushes it to ground, right? So there's, there's essentially no wet signal coming up. Essentially, all you're really getting is a signal right here which limits it to this section. And basically, any signal that comes to this is just a product of this one anyway, because you see it splits off right here. And that limits troubleshooting down to here. Now, of course, it, it would be a guilt by omission if I didn't mention the uh, potentiometer knob, right? So you have the, the bass and the treble knobs right here, along with the volume. And that's definitely a possibility worth considering, although it is worth discussing too, that it could also very well be a capacitor. My guess is, is that there's a very good chance that it's in and around the knob and or the capacitor just right over here, and that's the issue. Now it's time to break down the amp and see if that's in fact the case. So let's get started. The amp is now in the service position. I'm ready to get started with the troubleshooting. So here's an inconsistency I found immediately. I'm on the good channel, the normal, and I'm on the pot for the bass, and I'm at zero, and I'm going to dial it up now, and we'll watch the meter in the back. This is a 250K pot, but it's in circuit, so it may be slightly loaded down, and the sweep looks good. I'm gonna try and turn it as slowly as possible, right? And we can see we're at 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, right, 100, 150, we're at 200, and we can see that we're, we're, we're just over, we're just over 200K right here, right, as, as I would expect the pot to be, and maybe if it was out of circuit, it would be a little higher, or where it's not entirely perfect, it's, it's okay, right, so I'm going to bring that pot back down to, to zero, and note for this test, I've set the volume, the treble, everything exactly the same, 
for both channels for consistency purposes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off now and I'm going to put it on the base pot for the uh, channel in question. We're going to take a look at the performance of this one. Right, so as we'd expect, we're at zero, okay? I'm going to slowly turn this one up to the best of my ability. I'm, I'm turning it, right? And we are just, look at that, look at that. We had just barely made, what we're looking at, 8,000, right? 8K ohms is all we did. This is not nearly functioning as the other one had, right? And... This this uh, is immediately alarming. It could mean that the pot is bad, or it could mean that there's something upstream connected to this uh, pot that is causing this to have an, an extremely uh, low resistance. So what I could do right now is I could uh, disconnect the connections from one side of this pot and see if it immediately climbs back up to a healthy level. I'll know that the pot is okay, but if it I disconnect one side entirely from circuit and it remains down, in these low levels, then I know that the pot is bad. Let's do that now. And now with one side of the pot disconnected from circuit, we retest. Doesn't look healthy. Doesn't look healthy to me. Let me see what end-to-end -end looks like. The end-to-end -end connection is it's just not there. It's just not it's just not showing anywhere near what I would expect to see on the end-to-end -end connection. I wonder if there's just something in that pot that's causing it to uh, short out and just spraying it with deoxid may flush something out. It's it's worth just trying to flush it out to see if that fixes it. Maybe a quick fix. So I'm gonna do that now. Let's see what kind of reading I get. Having flushed out the pot, I now see a reading that closely aligns itself to the other pot. Let's do a sweep and see what we got. So there's zero and slowly draws up. Obviously higher, it's out of circuit, right, than the other one. <laughs> Could it have been a simple contamination within the pot? And that's it, let's find out. Good as new. Give it a shot one more time with the multimeter. Here we go, bottom, low sweep. Now we can see loaded down, sitting at the exact same position that the other input would be. That's good enough for me. We're gonna turn it on, see what we got. So I've got the amp uh, half assembled really quickly in order to test to see if this fix worked. So I'm plugged into the second channel. We're going to try it now. Bass is on one, so no bass. And while we do that, I'm going, to, I'm going to draw up the bass. Try to. And there we go, it's working. So that appears to have fixed the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the owner uh, if he's good with just cleaning this pot as sufficient or if he feels that that he wants to have that pot swapped out. And if he does want it swapped out, I'll do that or I'll leave it as is and call this repaired. I've heard back and we're going to go with this. If we have any more problems with the pot, then we're going to replace it. So I have reassembled the amplifier. Everything is all back together. And as usual, I am just checking the bias to make sure everything's okay. Uh, the voltage runs a little bit hot at the, um, at the shop. So I, I dial it back on my setting. I check it out. Uh, both tubes here are evenly matched. So this is exactly what I want to see. And so this is good. So I'll just put the back cover back on and we will be finished. So I hope you enjoyed another quick Fender Deluxe Reverb Repair. Thanks for watching.